हॅलो स्टुडंट्स आय एम डॉक्टर बाळासाहेब आगाव असोसिएट प्रोफेसर डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ केमिस्ट्री सांगोकाना ठाकूर आर्ट्स कॉमर्स अँड सायन्स कॉलेज न्यू पनवेल टुडे वी विल सी स्पेक्ट्रोस्कोपी स्पेक्ट्रोस्कोपी इन जनरल इज रेफर टू द एरिया ऑफ स्टडी वेअर वी गेट द इन्फॉर्मेशन अबाउट द मॉलिक्युलर स्ट्रक्चर देर आर व्हेरियस स्पेक्ट्रोस्कोपिक टेक्निक्स नॉर्मली यूज विच आर अल्ट्रावायलेट व्हिजिबल स्पेक्ट्रोस्कोपी इन्फ्रा रेड स्पेक्ट्रोस्कोपी न्यूक्लियर मॅग्नेटिक रेझोनन्स स्पेक्ट्रोस्कोपी विच इज अगेन सब डिवायडेड इन टू प्रोटॉन मॅग्नेटिक रेझोनन्स स्पेक्ट्रोस्कोपी सी थर्टीन स्पेक्ट्रोस्कोपी अँड इलेक्ट्रॉन स्पिन रेझोनन्स स्पेक्ट्रोस्कोपी अँड वन मोर इज मास स्पेक्ट्रोस्कोपी स्पेक्ट्रोस्कोपी इज बेसिकली द इंटरॅक्शन बिट्वीन द मॅटर दॅट इज सबस्टन्स अँड इलेक्ट्रोमॅग्नेटिक रेडिएशन्स द मॉलिक्युल इज युजली एक्सपोज टू सर्टन काइंड ऑफ रेडिएशन्स and the response is recorded uh, in the form of graph which is called as spectrum and by studying the spectrum it is possible to determine the structure of the molecule spectroscopic methods are very quick and accurate as well as it requires very small amount of sample as these methods are accurate but still it ha- these methods have uh, limitations like cost- costly instrumentation trained person for operation and expert for the interpretation of the data to determine the structure of the compound as you know uh, a spectroscopy deals with the interaction of molecule with electromagnetic radiation let's see the types of electromagnetic radiation electromagnetic radiations are classified based on either energy or the wavelength of radiation you can see in the diagram from lower wavelength radiation to higher wavelength radiation the electromagnetic radiations are classified as gamma rays x rays ultraviolet rays visible rays infrared microwave and radio wave radiations as we move from lower wavelength to higher wavelength in spectroscopic techniques we usually use ultraviolet and visible radiation for uv visible spectroscopy ir radiation in ir spectroscopy and radio wave radiation in the PMR spectroscopy or NMR spectroscopy we will talk about ultraviolet visible spectroscopy in general the uv visible spectroscopy detects the unsaturation in the molecule which can distinguish the isolated dyes and conjugated dyes as well as that can uh, distinguish between dyes and trines between carbonyl compound and alpha beta unsaturated carbonyl compounds UV visible spectroscopy can also determine the stereochemistry of geometrical isomers such as cis and trans. Basic theory behind ultraviolet and visible spectroscopy uh, is basically uh, as you as we know the ultraviolet region extends from 100 nanometer to 400 nanometer and visible radiation region st- uh, extends from 400 to 800 nanometer. As you know uh, these radiations are of more energy and low wavelength radiations and the energy of ultraviolet radiation is sufficient to cause the electronic excitation in the molecule so when ultraviolet radiation is interacting with the substance it can cause the excitation of the molecule from lower energy level to higher energy level so in all the ultraviolet spectroscopy is based on the electronic excitations in the molecule hence ultraviolet spectroscopy is also called as electronic spectroscopy now as uv visible spectroscopy based upon electronic excitation let's see what electronic excitations are any compound if you take there are three types of electrons sigma electrons pi electrons and non bonding electrons in the molecule the sigma and pi electrons have their corresponding high energy anti bonding molecular orbital that is sigma star and pi star when molecule absorbs ultraviolet radiation there is a promotion of electrons that is sigma electrons pi electrons or non bonded electrons from ground state to higher energy level that is sigma star and pi star schematic electronic excitation as you can see in the figure there are four major electronic excitation that that is taking place in the molecule is like uh you can see in the figure sigma to sigma star 
n to sigma star pi to pi star and n to pi star whereas sigma to pi star and pi to sigma star is not allowed transitions let's see the first type of electronic excitation is sigma to sigma star transition a sigma to sigma star electronic transition is a transition of electron from a bonding sigma orbital to higher energy antibonding sigma orbital it is sigma to sigma star transition as you know sigma electrons are tightly held in the molecule so it requires more energy to cause the excitation of sigma electron from its bonding molecular orbital to its antibonding molecular orbital and so as energy requirement is high these do not absorb in the uv visible region for example the compounds like hydrocarbon for example ethane methane or all saturated compounds where only sigma electrons are available in the molecule this will have more energy requirement to cause the sigma to sigma star electronic transition and thus the ultraviolet spectroscopy does not provide any information about the sigma bond and so saturated compounds like alkane cannot be analyzed using ultraviolet spectroscopy the second type of electronic transition is n to sigma star transition as name indicates this is the excitation of electron that is non bonding electron to the sigma star antibonding molecular orbital where the electrons are going to excite this type of electronic excitation is shown by saturated compound again but containing the heteroatom which have unshared pair of electrons which undergoes this type of transition for example saturated alcohols halides ethers amines thiols etc as this excitation is from a non bonded electron to sigma star antibonding molecular orbital this excitation requires comparatively less energy as compared to sigma to sigma star transition the next type of electronic transition is pi to pi star transition where this is the promotion of electrons from bonding pi orbital to antibonding pi star orbital which is called as pi to pi star transition where the excitation takes place in compound with unsaturation compound likes alkenes aromatics which contains the unsaturation which have the availability of pi electron so on its excitation this pi electron will be promoted to antibonding high energy antibonding molecular orbital that is pi star and you know pi bond is weak bond so the energy required to cause such type of excitation is less and this excitation as it's a less energy required transition it absorbs at longer wavelength as compared to sigma to sigma star transition or n to sigma star transition so the energy required for pi to pi star electronic transition is comparatively less than n to sigma star simple alkene like ethene they absorbs at 170 nanometer to 190 nanometer and as the number of unsaturation is increase in conjugation they will absorbs towards the longer wavelength and will be recorded into the ultraviolet region or in the visible region next type of electronic transition is n to pi star transition in this transition the electrons of unshared electron pair will be promoted to the high energy pi bonding antibonding uh, pi antibonding molecular orbital where this transition requires the least amount of energy among all the possible transitions in the molecule where you will have the compounds like carbonyl compound where you have the unsaturation along with the heteroatom where you have the availability of non bonded electron as well as you have the unsaturation like compound in carbonyl compound carbon sulfur double bond compound carbon nitrogen double bond carbon nitrogen triple bond kind of compounds will undergo this type of transition in short if you compare the relative energy requirement for the electronic transition the order of requirement of energy is sigma to sigma star have more energy required than n to sigma star transition this will require more energy than pi to pi star transition and pi to pi star transition requires more energy than n to pi star transition so 
n to pi star transition is the least energy required electronic transition which will be preferred if the molecule contains heteroatom and unsaturation now let's look how the uv visible spectrum is uv visible spectrum uh, where uh, when electronic excitation takes place in the molecule when they absorbs the ultraviolet and visible radiation the compound undergoes electronic excitation and which is which will be accompanied along with that there are large number of vibrational excitation and still large number of rotational changes also takes place and for every change in the molecule the wavelength is getting absorbed as this changes are large in number there is absorption for each and every change it is not possible to resolve all the signals and gets the a, a few broad bands will be obtained in the uv visible spectrum so there are no sharp peaks in the ultraviolet spectrum the bands are conveniently described by the wavelength corresponding to the hum that is lambda max value and intensity of absorption epsilon max you can see in the diagram how uv visible spectrum looks like it's a broad hum and the intensity of absorption at y axis and the wavelength of absorption that is lambda max which will be along the x axis now let's see some important terms in the ultraviolet spectroscopy like chromophore you know chromophore is the word which is derived from chroma means color and four means bearing those groups bears the color they are called as chromophore now which groups can act as a chromophore in the compound the unsaturated functional groups which are responsible for absorption of radiations are the chromophore for example nitro group carbonyl group carbon carbon double bond azo group and thio group etc etc which are unsaturated functional groups they are called as chromophore in the ultraviolet spectroscope second important term is oxochrome oxochromes are saturated functional groups and having non bonded electrons they do not absorb the radiation longer than 200 nanometer but when they are attached with chromophore they can cause the shift of absorption towards the longer wavelength for example saturated functional groups like hydroxyl group amino group methoxy groups halogen etc whoever are the saturated and having the non bonded electrons can act as a oxochrome another phenomenon in uv visible spectroscopy is the bathochromic shift it is also known as red shift bathochromic shift is the shift of absorption towards the longer wavelength is bathochromic shift look at the example where we have phenol and on its bathochromic shift in para nitrophenol you can see the absorption wavelength of phenol is at 270 nanometer whereas uh, absorption wavelength of uh, para nitrophenol is higher towards the longer wavelength it's called as a uh, bathochromic shift now the hypsochromic shift which is also called as blue shift a shift of absorption towards a uh, shorter wavelength is known as hypsochromic shift it is also called as blue shift and you can see the example of aniline and aniline in acidic medium you can see the difference in wavelength of absorption where aniline have the absorption wavelength 230 nanometer and it is shifting towards the shorter wavelength that is 203 nanometer hyperchromic shift and hypsochromic shift it's related to the intensity of electromagnetic radiation absorption of electromagnetic radiation causing increase in the intensity of absorption is called as hyper, hyper, hyperchromic shift or hyperchromic effect and it increases the intensity of absorption whereas hypsochromic shift is the absorption of electromagnetic radiation causing the decrease in the intensity of absorption is called as hypochromic shift it is causing decrease in the intensity of absorption and schematically you can define all these terms in one diagram here plot of absorption against the wavelength of absorption you can see that uh, towards the longer wavelength is the red shift towards the shorter wavelength is the blue shift towards the highest intensity of absorption is hyperchromic shift and towards the uh, decrease in the intensity of absorption is hypochromic shift these are the important terms which is used in the ultraviolet spectroscopy so today we will stop here and we'll continue the next part in the next video thank you